I am your father. I have sent my son to you. I sent my son that he would demonstrate my love towards you. I sent my son that he would be the radiance of my glory. I sent my son that you could see what heaven looks like here on this earth. I sent my son with authority. And with that authority, he brought heaven here on this earth. He touched people's minds. He touched people's hearts. And he touched people's bodies. By my authority, he spoke. By my authority, he walked. He submitted himself to me that you might live. And that you might have life abundantly. I sent him because I love you. I sent him that you could be free and you could live. Father, I'm so thankful that you're not superficial. God, is something that you're not just somebody we talk about. You're not somebody that's just sitting on a throne somewhere telling us what to do, telling us how to live. But Father, you have come in our midst. And you abide with us. You live within us. You make your home in our life. You speak to us. Speak through us. Lord, we thank you for bringing life to us. In your precious and mighty holy name. Amen. think Jesus will come back on Christmas? Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be fun. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, what a great time we're having today, amen. <laughs> the Lord is good. Um, we've been talking a little bit about, thank you so much, um, manifestation gifts and 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not very loud. I'm on, but I'm not very loud. <coughs> better? I can move this up. How's that? Better, better? Better, butter? Awesome. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jesus. So today we're going to talk a little bit about um, what we talked about last week. We'll tie this up a little bit, and then if the Lord willing, we'll move on to um, what I've been working on the last couple of days, but we'll just kind of see where the Lord leads us, amen? So uh, we've been talking about the manifestation gifts, and um, let's actually, if you have your Bible, why don't you turn to 1 Corinthians, and uh, you can see it visually where it's at. 1 Corinthians uh, 12, and 1 Corinthians 12. Oh, somebody's talking, huh? Well, I ran the snowblower this morning without earplugs, so I'm hearing myself talk right inside my head here. So, um, Travis cleaned the parking lot for us, so th thank you to Travis. He thought he was going to be here for half an hour or 45 minutes, and... Oh boy, three hours later, here we are. Some wonderful snow, though. My goodness, it's been fun. So anyway, um, praise the Lord. So 1 Corinthians 12, and last week we talked about spiritual gifts, and, and I'm going to read verse number 1. Uh, it says this, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. Once again, um, that word gifts is italicized, but... Um, uh, when you, when you start breaking that down a little bit, it's now concerning spiritual matters, okay? Now, we are spirit beings, okay? Uh, when we sinned, we, um, when we were born, we were born into sin. We were born out of Adam's seed, and out of that seed, uh, we were separated from God because of sin. Jesus came that we could have life and life more abundantly, and so in that sense, when Jesus comes in, when we ask Jesus into our life, right, he comes in, we have the breath of God, which is the Holy Spirit, we're breathed into, and life begins in a new way, amen, because of Jesus, okay? So when we start talking about um, going forward here, we're talking about we are spirit beings. He says that my word is spirit and life. So as we move forward, We'll look at this a little bit more. Now, we also see that in verse number 5, and there are a variety of ministries and the same Lord. Um, actually, I skipped ahead. Verse number 4, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. And there are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. So in other words, I look at it this way. I believe that everything originates out of the Father. We believe that um, in the Trinity, in the Godhead, um, um, God, the, uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are one, okay? They're not separate. They're not separately doing their own things. But we look at this and we go, God is, uh, the Father is administrating, and he's, and he's telling Jesus, he's going, go do this, right? And so Jesus, by his word, the word that is spoken. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he spoke. And I look at it as Jesus going forth, right? And the, and, and the Holy Spirit um, tying into those words and I'm accomplishing it, okay? So as we look at this, we see that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are involved in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do we need to be afraid of the gifts? Absolutely not. Okay, so... We're going to walk through this just a little bit right here. Um, I don't know, last week, I should have printed it on this week's too. So the gifts of revelation, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the word discerning of spirits, the inspirational gifts, which are the vocal gifts, which would be prophecy, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, faith, um, the gifts of power, working gifts, faith, healing, and working of miracles. So... Last week, was Stephanie here last week? Man, it seems like forever ago, doesn't it? So Stephanie was here last week, and she, and, um, and, and she was playing on the piano, and she was actually prophesying as she was speaking, okay, as she was singing. Kirsten was kind of walking in that just a little bit. 
Now, I know it's kind of nerve-wracking a little bit, but um, she was, she's, she's doing it, okay? And the other thing, too, that um, we want to look at, too, is that how interested is the people sitting out here in wanting the move of God? If you don't want it, it's not going to be, it's not happening, okay? So faith, anticipation by faith, brings it into, from the spirit realm, into the natural realm, okay? Even as a preaching of the word, sometimes it can be super, super hard preaching because everybody's going, I got this, I'm done, I'm, I'm out of here, whatever. I got roast in the oven. So whatever, you know what I'm saying? But if you're drawing, like the woman um, that's, she, she has a issue of blood, right? And she's crawling on her knees, and she is desperately in need of a healing, she touches his hem of his garment, power is released because she's drawing from Jesus, okay? And you draw from the anointing, you draw out the things that the Lord is wanting to present, okay? Now, where'd faith go? What? I want you to do this for me. I want you to, okay. So when we look at the word of God, and we look at the word of prophecy, or we look at um, the word of wisdom, um, word of knowledge, okay? So sometimes we get a little bit afraid of, okay? Even this morning, right? So the Lord is setting us up um, when there was, there, was a, there was an unknown tongue that was brought forth, Right? And there was also an interpretation of that tongue. Okay, that's the gifts of the Spirit. I'm not making it happen, but the Lord is setting us up for Him to move in our midst as we're growing and maturing. Okay, okay. so what happens is, I want you to come here. Now, if Teresa has a word of knowledge and she's reluctant, remember the question last week was, what if I don't give the... The message. What if I don't relay the word of God or that word that I'm feeling inside to an individual? What happens then? Why are we so afraid that God's going to browbeat us? Look at it this way. Okay, this is a silver coin or silver, okay? And we get to carry the word of God and we get to take it to whoever God wants us to take to. I want you to take that. Now, so when, when we take the word of God and we deliver it to somebody, I want you to stay there for a second. There's something that's going to happen there. You need to speak into this, please. Okay. So we, we have the word of God and we, and we, and we bring forth this word Okay, why should we be afraid? Right? We talked about this a little bit last week. This is a safe place. Okay. Now, um, before the interpretation or the tongues came forth, I'm wrestling. <laughs> right? I'm thinking, who's here? Who's going to run out the door when this happens? Right? Okay. Honestly, you wrestle with those things, but but God wants to show us some things. Um, one of the things that I, I, I think about is that there was a time, even when Kirsten was playing, that there was a time when possibly, I don't think it was re uh, quite then, but there was a quiet time. Do you, anybody sense the quiet time? There was a time that possibly there could have been room for a word of knowledge or tongues or an interpretation. Do you see what I'm saying? There, God is allowing through music, through what, what was happening, time for that to be healed. Okay. Anybody have a word? Maybe while we were doing worship. Anybody just struggled with worship besides my wife? You know why she struggles? Why do you suppose she struggles? Her daughter sitting here. Honestly, and she wants her to do well. 
because we've heard people criticize worship. That's not the body of Christ. Okay? You came to worship. You didn't come to worship with her. You came to worship him. So you and I need to close your eyes, <laughs> sing your own tune, whatever you want to do. Get off your high horse, right? Okay? And worship the Lord. We came. Are you good, Trace? If you're good, you good. Don't want to embarrass her. But probably already did. The Lord loves you, cares about you. He has a future and a hope for you. He sent you then for your family. God is, yes, amen. There's some, there's amazing things. Stay ready, remember? I told you that. Stay ready. I think we all, that's a specific word for family, but for us to be ready. Stay ready. Stay ready for what God wants us to do. Okay? He's wanting to work through the church through his people, through people even in the, in the world. There's opportunity. Um, So as we're, as we're looking at this, we're looking at the gifts that God wants to walk us in as we're walking in the things of the Lord. And trust, and trust ourselves to the Holy Spirit. I'm thinking as I was driving home this morning, um, I'm thinking of why, we're, why are we so afraid to speak out what the Holy Spirit would want us to speak? Last week we talked a little bit about um, order. We talked a little bit about possibly coming to the mic. You didn't come to the mic. <laughs> so, what's that? <laughs> so, one of the things that we, what we're asking is, is that you come to the mic, right? And, and so, what does that do? Two things. I, I don't know if you notice or not, but our, our, our people have ear, ear, earbuds, they're called earbuds. And so they prob probably have, do you guys have two earbuds in or just one? Just one. Why do you suppose they have one earbud in and not the other? Okay. So they can hear. Okay. There was an instance about a couple, three weeks ago that I talked to a gentleman. And they were in a, in a church in, and um, someone from out there brought forth a message in tongues, just like happened here, just like I did. Okay. So the drummer or the guitar player is doing this. He's got two earbuds in. He's he's doing this, and he starts singing while that interpret or while that tongue is being brought forth. No fault to him because he doesn't know that it's happening, right? So, out of courtesy for the congregation, we have someone come forward and therefore speak out. Okay, and like I said, it's not. She's not in trouble for not coming forward, okay? She's not in trouble at all. But we want people to hear, right? It's a special word. And so we want people to hear what the Spirit of the Lord, what the word of knowledge, or even the interpretation of what was spoken to be heard by people. Because it's valuable. You'll never give that silver dollar away. I should give it to your little baby girl. You see what I'm saying? It's valuable. And, 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 and so you think, well, that was not a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. God's word is valuable. We don't know. I, I remember um, Stephanie just talked about a couple uh, things. Um, maybe what's one, more, one phrase that she spoke that was very powerful last week that someone grabbed a hold of? Do you remember? What's that? Okay, the more valuable statements that were spoken, right, by God through an individual. We don't know what someone's going through. I remember, I remember this just as vivid as ever. God, you are so good. You're so good. And, and um, we're singing that song. And I'm watching, and, and this one individual cannot sing it. Because they don't think God is good. They don't think God is good. I began to pray over her, and she had breakthrough. And, and God is good. 
Amen. In six months, the prayer that she'd been praying for 10 years came to pass. Amazing. God is faithful. Powerful. But it activates, you know what I'm saying? Activating faith. I believe God can do this. I believe God can do this through you. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, here we go. We're going to switch gears. One of the things I really think the Lord is speaking to us about, and um, as we wind up um, the year, we have two, two Sundays left, this Sunday and next Sunday. That's correct, right? Yeah. Isn't the first going to be on next Sunday too? Well, we got three Sundays then. Okay. Anyway, but what I'm thinking is this, right? At the beginning of the year, the Lord spoke to me, and I'm, I'm reiterating this so because, I don't know if you recall this or not, but I believe that God was saying that God is uniting the church, uniting the body of Christ, and also maturing the body of Christ. And what I am seeing is that very thing with my very eyes, but also here. People are growing in the things of God. And I'm going, thank you, Jesus. Okay? Now, I believe that God is, 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 is growing us in a place where, um, where we love one another. You know what? You ever been in a family that just loves one another? You ever been in a family that just fakes it? Right? You get together and you're just faking love? You're faking like I love you? <laughs> it's kind of, there's some tension there, right? God wants us to be um, people that love one another. Okay? No one says that we have to be best friends. Jesus had 12 disciples. He wasn't friends with everybody. And he had three that were very, very close to him. So t for you to think that you have to l be friends with everybody, ain't going to happen. But God has special friends for you. God has a close friend for you. Be a friend to somebody so that they can be a friend to you too. Does that make sense? God has friends for us. I think probably um, men have probably more, have a harder time with friends than women. Is that true? Okay. Why? Because we never talk to each other, right? <laughs> Me and Doug were working in, uh, you know, I was working in his house a while back and I'm mud and whatever, and we say about five words. That's it. We're good. That's it. You know what I mean? How can we be friends if we're not communicating, honestly? Um, but, you know, it's just, that's men. But that doesn't give us an excuse. We need relationship. We need friends. We need friends. Okay. So, spring forth. How much time do they leave downstairs? Okay. We're ready to quit, I think. Um, spring forth. I believe that God is wanting us to spring forth. We were in prayer the other day, and um, that word just came up so strong. Springing forth. Now, one of the things that we have thought of, I guess, and, and, and maybe misunderstood, Lord. One of the things that we maybe misunderstood is this, is that if God wants to do something through me, go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's not how it works. You know what I'm saying? We submit to him. We submit ourselves to him. We submit our voice to him. Okay? Uh, let, me, let me read this just really quick. Help me, Lord. Okay. The Tom in me wants to preach the sermon that I got here. And the Holy Spirit is saying, no, don't do that, okay? So we're going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. 14, actually. So as, as, as we're going to bounce on to the uh, gifts again a little bit, and um, Paul, if, if, if you can remember... Paul is, 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 has established the church in Corinth. Corinth. He leaves, he hears a bunch of things, and so he writes a letter to Corinth, okay? And so in Corinth, in the church, 
some weird things are happening, okay? Some weird things like disorderly stuff that's going on. Um, and so Paul is, is not only teaching us in the Corinthians, First and Second Corinthians, he's also correcting some of the things that are happening that he doesn't want happening, that he doesn't think is orderly or godly. So I'm going to start in verse number 26. So when, in, what is the outcome then, brethren, when you assemble each one, when you assemble, each one has a psalm, each one has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation. So there's how many things going on? Each one has a psalm, a teaching, a revelation, a tongue, and an interpretation. How many know that that can get really a lot going on at one time? Amen? Okay, so what, what Paul is saying, we invite all those things to happen, but it has to happen orderly, okay? Here we go. Because it wasn't back then. If anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be by two or at the most three, each in turn, let one interpret, okay? So in other words, there can be tongues, okay, unknown tongues that can be interpreted, and it can happen more than once, but don't let it Take over everything, okay? Two or three. Here we go. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay. I'm going to ask you something, Chris. Okay. So I'm, I, I feel like the Lord is wanting to me to walk in the gift of the unknown tongue, okay? So I, I speak it out. There was a delay. Okay? There's a delay. What are you doing? As, as an individual, as a believer, maybe you don't know much about this, but as a believer, what are you doing? What are you doing? As a believer, what are you doing? Are you by faith pulling the words? By faith. Are you, are, you, are you anticipating by faith the, the words that are coming? Or are you going like this? Oh, my gosh, this is embarrassing. Honestly, you as an individual have a, a responsibility to the body to bring forth the interpretation. Ah, uh, Someone else will do it. That's my wife right there. <laughs> I remember when she gave her first testimony. She was probably sitting, well, a little bit, probably where Jay was. We were in a pew. She gave her testimony this Sunday night. She started it, hyperventilated, handed me the mic, and sat down. <laughs> it happens. So, okay, so there's a pause. Okay? I'm not... We're anybody out, okay? We're just walking through this. Tell me what was happening in the delay, okay? There's a delay. And I'm waiting. And so I speak forth, okay? The interpretation of tongues. How, what, what are you saying that yours was? It was what? That's why she didn't go up. Okay, so there was, she, there was an addition or an extension to, okay, what the Lord wanted to say. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this, okay? Um, when a manifestation gift comes forth um, and they're in operation, one is not taken over by the Holy Spirit and lose control of oneself, Okay? The one speaking is not speaking in a frenzy or some kind of trance. I don't know if you've ever been around this, okay? Josh, you've been around a little bit, okay? Some of that. There's some things that happen that people involve their emotions. Now, we want heartfelt things spoken. And when we speak, or when someone speaks, we want their heart to be involved in that. In fact... That's exactly how God wants it to be, is to speak out of your heart. 
I don't know if you noticed, but at the end, there was a, there was a, there was a wooing, almost like God is just inviting you. You know what I mean? So you're speaking under the, we entrust ourselves to the Holy Spirit, and, and it, it's not scary. <laughs> He's not going to grab you and shake you. He's not, not, you've seen some of those things. And sometimes people express themselves differently, and that's okay, okay? But it, we, want to, we want order as well, okay? Now, where am I going, Lord? Help me, Jesus, huh? Everybody doing okay? Okay. Um, so so as, we're, as we're going, right, we, we see that there was an extension um, or an add-on uh, to what the Lord wanted to speak. Okay, now, <laughs> it's all good. You want to start preaching here? <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, please. We, we want to see the, the Facebook. Outside of that, a lot of times when there's that pause, if you're listening, if you're, you're just turning your spiritual eyes and your ears towards heaven and you're listening for, for what the Lord may be going to say to you to give or to um, somebody else, but that anticipation is part of the drawing. You're, you're confident. You're waiting for something. You're waiting not just for something to happen, but for the Lord to speak. And when you're waiting on God, you're in the presence of God, so he's, he's kind of committed to his work. It's not just something that's going to come into your head and um, be foolishness. It's going, to, it's going to speak to the hearts of the hearers because it's from God. It's not just something that's rolling out of your mind. So when I knew that, from instance, that I had, I didn't have the beginning, I had the end. And so I'm sitting there waiting. I'm waiting for what the Lord is going to do in the first half. And it's perfectly all right if the person that gave the tongue also gives the interpretation. It's perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, if you have prayed and asked the Lord for um, the understanding of tongues as well as in speaking them, there's, there are those times that you can give the, um, give the word in tongues and then give the interpretation. More often, it's somebody else that should be giving it but not necessarily wanting to give it. And that's where that lengthy pause comes in, is most of the time, and I'm almost willing to bet, somebody in here knows they had that word. And they just were kind of a little bit nervous to give it. I don't like getting up in front of people regardless of what you think. I don't. But I know that I answer to somebody bigger than the rest of us. And so you have to decide whether that person that you honor, you worship, you call God, you give your, who rules your life, has authority to get, send you on an assignment. And so even if it's just getting up here, it's an assignment. It's, it's a going out, even right here in this building. And when you say yes to him, you're saying yes to the feet, you're saying yes to the body, you're saying yes to every part of you. And so when he says go, it's hard to let your mind just go up there and not your body. You've got to kind of go together. And, and God blesses that. Amen. Very good. I just said it in five words. She said it in 55, and that's awesome. She's a very good teacher. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, and one of the things that, you know, last week I used the illustration of white knuckling it. You know, you have sense that the Lord has a word that he wants. Maybe it's not publicly, okay? Maybe it's not publicly. Um, <laughs> Jay, when we were, and I'm not embarrassing Jay, but Jay says, I have something to say, right? You heard us talking. I don't know if you've seen that or not, right? I said, let's just wait, okay? Let's just wait a second. So we wait, okay? The unknown tongues, the interpretation comes, and so the extension comes, and it's going, okay, Jay. And Jay goes, what? It's not ready yet. I, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit ahead of myself, okay? 
a little bit ahead of myself. I'm not, I, I'm, it's not for everybody. It's maybe for an individual. Does that make sense? Now, let me, let me use this illustration. I think it's really, really good in the fact that let's say that you're a freshman in, in high school and um, when you're in track and you're in blocks, your 100-yard dash, and this is your first time, okay, and you, you're in the blocks, you're anticipating. Did you ever take off in blocks? You guys were long distance runners, or yeah, whatever. Okay, so, so the what's that? Okay, <laughs> on a three mile run, yeah. So the gun is ready, okay, and this freshman never done been in this circumstance before. He's in the blocks. He's anticipating. He's going go, and he takes off right and the gun didn't go off, right? So he's not disqualified. I think you get two chances or something. So he backs up in the, in the blocks again. And so, again, every tenth of a second counts now in, in a 100-yard dash. It counts. So he's going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get it right when that gun goes off. So he, he anticipates a little too soon again, right? So he, he disqualifies himself, okay? The coach didn't, dis or the, the guy that's running the thing didn't dis disqualify him. He disqualified himself, okay? God never disqualifies us, okay? Let's get that clear. So as, as an individual, when you speak out, okay, let's say that you speak out and it's not the right time. How many know that it's not the right time sometimes? Okay, it's just not the right time. Are you disqualified? No, you're not. <laughs> Amber said it earlier. It's a place where we can learn, where we can learn how to do this, right? Right? So, so I'm saying as, we, as you're waiting, right, don't be too quick, but don't wait too long. Does that make sense? In most cases, right, we will super analyze it in our brain and we'll go, I'm not doing it. That sounds foolish. That's not going to work. You know, see what I'm saying? There's probably more of a chance of you backing yourself out of the race than you disqualifying yourself because you went too soon. Hopefully I'm not talking in circles here, but just trying to do some instructional things because we don't need to be afraid of the operation and the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit within our midst, okay? And it's not just for here, it's when we go out, okay? We go out and we lay hands on the sick, or we go out and we have a word of knowledge, a very valuable word for people in the time of crisis possibly. See what I'm saying? And so it's important that you, uh, uh, that we submit ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you need a mic. Come up here. When is a bad time? I'll let Chris answer that. Is, is there a bad time? Um, when something else is going on, for sure. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's almost like this, okay? It's almost like this. When worship is going on, you probably shouldn't be doing something on your phone. That's not the right time to be on the phone. You shouldn't be talking while worship is going on. That's not the right time to be talking. You see what I'm saying? Orderly. You have to be, it has to be orderly. Yeah. Yeah, you have to say it loud so the people can hear you. Well, and, and one of the things that we have to be careful to is when you're articulating it, okay, and, and this takes 
um, what do we say? Cooperation, what do we say? Not practice, we don't, we're not using the word practice. What do we use? Just uh, um, continually submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, so if I have a word, and the, the word is being brought forth, and I'm crying and sobbing and snot's rolling down my ro- nose and down my face, and I can't get very many words out, okay? What'd you go up there for? I didn't hear anything. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes our emotions can get so in there, and, and it takes time, honestly, because we're sometimes, it's, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, honestly, to, to have that presence of the Lord come and have you speak. Yes. Speak it loud. Today? Right, right. Right, right. And you're still alive. <laughs> so, so here, here's the thing, is that she, basically what she's saying is that there was that space, right? And, and the word was there. She chose not to speak it, which is, that's fine. You know what I mean? But once again, we have this, <laughs> we have this valuable word to bring forth and we choose not to do it because fear of man, whatever it may be. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's something that you're wrestling with. You know what I mean? And so she could have easily came up here, grabbed the mic, and brought forth the word of God. Right? Very easily. Isn't this fun? It is fun. But it's learning. It's it's it's. It's trusting each other and not having the fear of man, you know? And, and that's the thing. I mean, even in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, that's, I, I believe that's why Paul states that, you know? Um, willing to trust the Holy Spirit more than you trust your eyes and your brain, basically. Submitting to him. We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for a wonderful day. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for life in you. Thank you for valuable words. Thank you for this growing process. Thank you, Lord, that we are all vessels. Lord God, you have created us as a potter creates the pot on the clay, or the clay, and, and creates this pot, Lord God. We are that vessel that you're creating and you're molding and you're making, not creating, but molding and making. We thank you, Lord, that we'd just be pliable to you. Lord God, we want to be submitted to you, Lord God, and submitted to authority and submitted to uh, what's going on, Lord God. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. We thank you for what you're doing in our midst, Lord God. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We exalt you today because of your son, Jesus. And also, Lord God, we, we just say thank you for who you are. You are almighty. You are almighty. 
Lord, whether I see something with my eyes or not, you are almighty. You are worthy to be praised. God, I thank you, Lord, as you pour out your spirit, Lord. In these last days, Lord, I thank you that you're drawing your fathers back to their children. God, I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. I thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for answered prayer, even in that sense, Lord God. That you're drawing the father back to their children, back to their family, back to their, um, their divine role. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for mothers. God, I pray that you'd give them, Lord God, just bless them today, Lord God. Bless those who have grandchildren and children, Lord. And, and Father, may they always continue to pray and lift up their, their children before you. But also, Lord, we thank you for our community. We thank you for this state, Lord God. We thank you for the United States, Lord God. We thank you for the opportunity to be in this in this time, at this period of time, in this world, Lord God. And so we just say, exalt you. We just exalt you today. You are worthy to be praised. Mighty, mighty God are you. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name, amen. Thank you so much for those who are watching by Facebook. I know that some of that you may not have heard, but anyway... Um, it's all good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes.